Well, hello, everybody. We are just a few minutes late. Pardon us, ladies. We were uh, having some technical difficulties because that's just the name of the game right now, of course. Uh, we are here live uh, with the Cocktail Club, and I am Sailor. And I'm here with my colleague, Kitty, Hello. who's brand ambassador in Boston for Uncle Nearest. And I'm here with one of my dear friends, Shannon Mustafer, who is a mixologist extraordinaire and an author of the, which way I'm always, I'm mirrored. I always get it the right, <laughs> way, point the right way behind me. Her what book. do you know, Taylor? <laughs> I hope you know. It's called Tiki Modern Tropical Cocktails. And you guys don't have your copy already. Woohoo! You need to change that really fast. Oh, it's beautiful. Isn't it it's beautiful? So oh, look at look it. Look at that. It's that's gorgeous. Yeah. So thank you so much um, for agreeing to be on the show with us, Shannon. I am so excited uh, to talk to you about your book and your career and what's happening with you right now. And then you're going to make a cocktail for us, right? Well, I got that and more for you. Oh, so uh, hang on tight. I'm, <laughs> I'm ready to, you know, make this a really fun evening in Sailor. It's great to see your face. I had so much fun on Not Bad for a Girl. <laughs> you know, got a chance to see Kayla in person in Nashville. I know. It's so fun. So, and it was really lovely. So, it, it's great to be here and great to share this time with your guests. And I'm honored to be a part of representing Uncle Nearest. Yay, thank you. We're honored to have you. Um, so let's, uh, why don't you tell us, for the viewers that don't uh, know about your path and your career, just tell us a little bit about yourself and how you came to writing the cocktail book, Tiki Modern, Modern Tropical Cocktails. Yeah, sure. So I'm a Southern gal, so you got to bear with me, all right? Uh, let's just think about, you know, what are the heavy hitters in American literature, right? They come from the Southern port. So it's going to be a bit of a, a windy road, but I think that's why we're here. Right? Okay, y'all know what I'm talking about. Okay, so I love it. Born in Charleston, and my family moved to Atlanta when I was six years old, and I spent my summers in Charleston mostly up until high school. And it was there that I observed my grandma's home cooking. We're talking about lima beans and ham hocks simmering for like six to eight hours on the stove Ooh. and then on the other side of my family um you know barbecues crab cracks just that hospitality that warm family feeling like that's how i grew up uh, my first hospitality job proper was working as a barista in providence rhode island where i went to college at rhode island school of design and i caught the bug my manager there was like this really charismatic gentleman. And I just love observing the way he not only served the guests, but modeled, you know, how we could act as a staff behind the scenes to maintain the establishment. And it was just so cool. And I just kind of went hog wild there. Like I ended up, you know, reading about coffee every day and I accumulated like 10 or 12 different apparatus to make coffee. And I even started baking biscotti because oh. I was like, I want to give the best service. I have to put the Scotty with it. Yeah. You know, <laughs> That's so sweet. And I don't eat cookies. But I was like, I'll do anything to give you the best service. I so that, that kind of laid the groundwork. But um, let's fast forward about 15 years after that. I, I consider myself to be a little bit of a late bloomer, but I will not name my age. Um, <laughs> I moved to New York in 2006, was working in the photo industry initially, but moonlighting on the side as a wine bar tender, working in a wine shop, really loving that educational element that went into helping guests and customers uh, feel comfortable picking out something they would like. And then uh, six years ago, got into working in restaurant bars full time. Not long after that, and please don't ask me how this happened. I, I think. I like to say that uh, it tells me I was looking at a restaurant which is called Gladys and uh, they went from New American to Rum Bar. I uh, switched over that program, got to really dig deep into my creativity and my passion around like service and liquids. Um, and I felt head over heels for rum. 
found my voice as a mixologist to interpret some liquids in a category that a lot of people were not too familiar with. So I think that's uh, it in a nutshell, but there's always more. <laughs> I love it. That's amazing. There's a lot more because of this beautiful book. Yeah. That you wrote, <laughs> which uh, I can tell you. So I purchased this book. Oh my gosh. It's been, I think, a, has it been a year, Shannon, since we did that first show? That was a fast year. Yes, give or take. So the book came out last March, and um, I think we spoke a few months after that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It is a, it's an absolutely stunning book. And what I love about this book is not only it's hardcover and I have, I don't know about you guys, I have a thing about hardcover books. It's just, mm -hmm. I don't know. Um, but the full, the full page photos are just so beautiful. If we again, mirroring beautiful and amazing. Um, and it's just a really approachable book. Um, I feel like it's just, uh, you know, a lot of tiki books uh, I've heard from people like, oh, I tried and I just don't understand it or I don't get it. I don't know what any of the ingredients are. I don't understand, you know, how to put it together. Um, so that that was a success for sure with your book. That's awesome. Hey, well, I just got to acknowledge my editor, John O'Jarrett at Rizzoli, and I hope he's watching. You know, Yay. he's worked on numerous titles and were not for his guidance to be like, hey, can you explain this? Can you break it down? Because he's mostly a cookbook editor mm -hmm. and, ah, okay. you know, geared towards people working at home, which is not my experience. And it really opened my eyes, um, not only to my own process, but how to talk about it with anybody on any level. Mm -hmm. And um, apparently it, it came across in a really positive way. Absolutely. It's a it's a weird transition, isn't it, to go from making the cocktail for the guest and just presenting it to them and that's 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 what you do. And then to go from, well, let me explain how you can recreate this at home uh, when I'm not there to help you out. It's mm -hmm. not easy. <laughs> yeah, it's so interesting. I mean, it was great. Again, it was like I had to teach myself all over again. Right. And I'm a long lover of learning so it all works out that's amazing yeah absolutely um kitty here is an author as well I am. Um, <laughs> she, and i don't have your book handy to oh i need to send you one yes, i need to send both one <laughs> you trade or no don't worry i'll buy your books <laughs> It's drinking like ladies, and uh, mm -hmm. it's it's absolutely a wonderful, wonderful book. So, um, so mm -hmm. Shannon, when we, when you, uh, I guess, how is what? Do, what do you feel about the spirits and tiki cocktails? I mean, I know there are some purists that are like it's it's you know only these it's it's a rum base. It's these spirits only. Your your quintessential tiki spirits. How do you feel about uh, using other spirits outside of the rum category, outside of your typical tropical um, uh, spirit categories in cocktails? Well, I, I think it's no holds barred. It's really important to keep in mind that when tiki or tropical drinks, like because the, the label tiki was applied somewhat retroactively after, you know, the mid-century Americana passed away in the 60s and 70s. Okay, so um, Don Beachcomber called his cocktails Rum Rhapsodies, but why did he choose rum? It was mm -hmm. just after Prohibition. That was the most cost-effective spirit, and he was also fascinated with those uh, flavors and that lifestyle, as was the American populace, you know, post-World War II, GIs coming back from home. So long and short, um, I think it was a, a cultural historical moment that allowed rum to emerge as a um, spirit of choice, so to speak, in tiki. And so these days, we have so many things available to us that I don't believe that it has to be limited to one spirit category, but whatever you can use imaginatively to transport people to other places and tell stories because I think that's at the heart of tiki. How can I give you something you don't expect and make it fun and transportive? 
It's amazing. I think that's something that people need so much right now too. Just speaking, maybe I, oh, I just need it. <laughs> I'll just tell you this much, all right? And no offense to, you know, our, our current uh, administration, <laughs> but I do believe that the explosion of tiki and tropical focused bars took place about three or four years ago. And I don't think that's a coincidence. <laughs> I think I, I agree. <laughs> now more than ever. So I'll just leave it right there. Yeah. Well, I, I think wherever, it. whatever side you sit on, it can feel, these times can feel really intense. And I think that that's sort of, especially um, most recent times. So I think that's sort of escapism. I think you're exactly right. Yes, absolutely. I love being whisked away by you talking about it too. I think it's fantastic. <laughs> So, speaking of escaping, let's escape tonight. Can we take us on a journey? Yeah, let's do it. So, I have a cocktail that I'm really fond of. It's called the Banana Bliss. It's traditionally built on a brandy, but it can be interchangeable with a kind of lighter, more full um, whiskey. You know, okay. There's been a lot of interchangeability between whiskeys, bourbons, rye and American brandies, depending on where you're living and what the time period is. It's an old fashioned, which I think is super comforting right now. Mm -hmm. And it's also something that's really easy to bottle. So I'm going to build it right in the glass. Um, before I do that, I'll tell you a little bit about the spec. It um, comes from the early 1950s, 1920s, a little hard to pin down, but it's essentially a tropical-ish take on an old fashioned. Uh, you can use a cognac, a California brandy as the base. I'm going to use uh, this 1884. I think it has a, a softer element to it and a little bit of uh, vanilla notes, which is very copacetic in the tropical space. And then the more um, traditional elements would be a banana liqueur and a sherry. But in the case of this, I'm going to use some all-spice jam and a little dash of Angostura bitters because that is a little more, um, I would say, uh, it holds up better with the bourbon. All right. So, love it. I love let's that. get started. Right. So, for those of you who may be a little less uh, familiar with bartending, um, ice and chill is really important. Ice, on one hand, to aid in dilution, which helps the ingredients meld together and to make it more mellow and smooth. Mm -hmm. So to that end, uh, I want to reach to my freezer right now and get an ice cold glass mm -hmm. some ice. I'm all about the chilled glass. I'm all about your reach and freezer too. <laughs> like a real low boy at a restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Oh, oh, are you ready to go? <laughs> beautiful and frosty. I mm. will not be stopped by this situation yeah. one, okay because i don't have time for that okay <laughs> i'm going to use a bar spoon of all size jam which is a liqueur based on rum it has cinnamon all size other things that are proprietary they don't tell you what it is and that's fine that's part of the history right so we got that and then i'm going to use a quarter of an ounce of a banana liqueur yeah I love Jaffard. Mm. The Tempest Fugit is delicious. Mm. Whatever your wallet can bear. Mm -hmm. So I leave to you no judgment. Now I love Jaffard as well. I use I use Jaffard all the time. It does the job. All right, eighteen eighty four here. Beautiful. Yeah. I'm going to do an ounce and a half, and now I'm going to add some Jamaica rum because. A little funk is necessary just to make these banana and tropical flavors pop here. Yes. Love it. So a little extra nerdiness, all right? So consider that some of the earliest punches involved splits of a few spirits. It wasn't always strictly, you know, a whiskey, a rum, or a cognac. There were definitely a few things that went into the pot because this is kind of like a communal thing, a luxury thing. So to that end, I want to use a little bit of Hamden Estate, Jamaica, New York blend. I won't tell you what I got it, 
But <laughs> I'm so glad that I did. I, I love rum. Jelly here. I love rum and whiskey together. It's one of my favorite spirit combinations. <laughs> um, we had Ian Burrell on the show recently, and uh, I I, vol- I already have you hired to be at a uh, launch of his rum when it comes to the states. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yes. I volunteered your services. Thank you. Hi, you. I hope you're here. All right, y'all. I so, <laughs> put some ice cubes in here. I'm going to chill it. Again, um, the philosophy here with especially a spirit for a drink is that you want everything as cold as possible. Mm-hmm. So um, the dilution element is good in terms of um, what we got going on here. I didn't finger it before I added the ice, but basically... Um, depending on the size of your finger, you kind of want the liquid to start at the bottom. And then once you're done dilution, you see about, you know, an inch, inch and a half uh, of dilution. And then you know that the liquid is where it needs to be. Okay. That's All a right? great tip for beginning. Yeah, that's a great tip. Tenders. That's really, yeah, really good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Look, everyone's different, so. Mm-hmm. I love that. Don't take it from me. Do what you want. <laughs> I'm a, a big believer, not um, a right or wrong way. But um, take it as a template and then feel it out because the cocktail is for you. So you know how you feel. Make it the way that works for you. Okay, so now I'm going to pour it into my chilled glass. Um, With the spirit for a cocktail, very important to minimize the bubbles because it's meant to be smooth and silky. And so extra air and oxygen undermines that. So now we got the drink in here. I'm going to add a cube to keep it um, where we want it to be and also to mellow it out over time. Um, while I'm doing this, I got to give a bit of a shout out to Q-Kit. I'm using their tools here. They're a really amazing company that launched this year. And the idea behind it is that you get this bucket, you get a roll up, very beautiful, professional, great tools Ooh. that are really fun to travel with. Um, as I mentioned earlier on Instagram, I'm in a remote location. And so this is really helpful in me being able to bring up an efficient bar kit. So I'm going to give it a little stir here just to anoint the ice, so to speak. Ooh, ooh I like that word. Good vocab. Well, Shannon <laughs> calls herself a spirit guide, which I oh, am obsessed with that so term. That. <laughs> I mean, now more than that, we really got to, you know, Put some spirit into it, all right? Because yes, uh, times are tough. Okay. okay, so I'm gonna attempt to express over here, but um, <laughs> these are not my regular <laughs> <laughs> setup. <laughs> <laughs> <Every time. laughs> like uh, you know, trying to work it right now. When like, you're alone, like, it works perfect, right? Oh, but when right. you're on camera, right. Right. I'm famous. <laughs> I'm a little pressure here. Oh, man. And I'm snorting. Well, now. you get the idea, right? <laughs> so I'm gonna express this. And we have a little smoke over here, so I think that's tasty and appetizing. All right, so we got our Uncle Nearest play on a banana bliss. Mm. Guys, don't be jelly. I will give you the recipe later. Please. Have fun. But I'm going to try it for you, all right? Okay, Dad. (laughs) I'll pretend I'm tasting it. I know. (laughs) All right, y'all. Good stuff. This recipe. So what I love about using uh, the 1884 is that it has very subtle and gentle vanilla notes on it um, as if it's a, a bourbon. I spent a little time in a, a cast. Um, there's a little bit of spice on it, but again, really background note. I chose the banana bliss as a template because you got that kind of toasted banana bread mm. that kind of mm. underlies and amplifies the, the subtle notes of a, what I would call like a more burly character that is not so pronounced here. We'll talk about it more in our, the 1856. But mm-hmm. anyway, very easy. If you want a old fashioned, that's a little easier to drink in a warmer month, yeah. and you want an escape. Love it. Boom. Time. Also, like banana bread has had such a glow up during quarantine. <laughs> I don't know if you're <laughs> I do. I need a project. So, it's so awesome. it's, can I you tell us it. again the name of the bar tools kit? Mm-hmm. One of our viewers is asking. Yeah, sure. So I'm going to 
show the lid of this box. In fact, I'll show you the whole thing here. Okay, Ooh. so show and tell. You hit. Wow. Oh. <laughs> Guys, <laughs> <laughs> nice, forgive me. But cute kit, you can get it online. I'm going to do something a little less bombastic here. So, <laughs> <laughs> so within the box, you get a oh, little so roll cool. up. So there's a mixing glass in here. You get a shaker. A really nice um, set of strainers, a spoon, virtually every tool that you yeah, need yeah, yeah. professional grade. And so you roll it up, it goes to the box. But the okay. box also functions as a ice vessel. Ice. Mm -hmm. So it's like cool for traveling, cool for picnics, what have you. Yeah. Um, I'm really glad I have it right now. Love Free it. for events and stuff too, though, right? Like, I, I can't tell you guys how many times I've showed up at an event and been like, I guess my ice bin is going to be this yes. <laughs> cardboard <laughs> box with a trash There's bag a in it. It's, it's, it's great. It, it launched um, early this year. That's awesome. And the other caveat is that it comes with an app. So you buy the box, cool. you get the app, and then it walks you through all these classes. Oh, That's cool. Fantastic. Very cool. We'll post a link after the show for sure. That's awesome. Awesome. I love it. Um, so will you make us another drink, Shannon, since we have a little bit of time? Well, we have some time, but what I really like to do is what I call saving the best for last. So if you guys are cool with that, let's like chat a little bit. Let's talk about Uncle Nearest and love it. You know, we can send you off with a, a nightcap because the other one is a little bit more of a, you know, crusher. Ooh, <laughs> I like it. <laughs> we love it. Fabulous. I love it. <laughs> so when I use um, Uncle Nearest and rum together, um, typically I'm, I use both, both expressions, but I typically go for a rum that's not an overproof rum. So, and so tell me how, if I'm on track here, because I want to be able to taste both spirits and not have one take over the other one. And I feel like the Uncle Nearest 1856 in specific is a hundred proof. So it can stand up to a lot of dilution. And so I think it does really well when you have, um, you know, a lot of tiki cocktails or, or are heavy dilution. So that's kind of my thinking when I, when I have, uh, when I use rum and, and whiskey and cocktails. Yeah, sure. So in regards to the 1856, because it has a, a little bit of a burly character, that's what I like to call it. You know, there's some earthy notes, a little bit chocolate, um, very dry and tannic. Mm -hmm. I love pairing this with a high ester, my high ester, some like extra floral notes, extra kind of like baked fruit notes that you will find in a pot still Jamaica rum. You'd add a rum that clocks in at 45, 55, or upwards of 60% ABV. Um, the higher the ABV in the case of Jamaica rum, you get more of those floral notes. Um, so those two are very copacetic in my mind because it gives you this really kind of broad spectrum of flavors. And then depending on what other ingredients you put together in there, you know, you can go very floral, you can go really fruity, or you can go kind of like gritty and earthy. So it, it's all about your mood. Mm. But I'm right there with you. Um, rum and the spirit is amazing. As far as, you know, drilling down on what rums are the best, I'm more inclined to go with a Jamaica rum because it amplifies and fills in the floral and fruit notes that are a little less apparent in here initially. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you taste something like maybe a Latin style, you're going to get a little more of these kind of caramel notes. And I don't believe this is about caramel. Mm -hmm. That's just me, though. Mm -hmm. I love that. I love that. Um, could you guys, uh, either or both of you, maybe share some tips on working with high proof spirits just for some of our home bartenders or people who are new to the craft that might not really know, um, like, just things to keep in mind if you're trying to build a drink with something at home like that. That's a high. I proof. love that. Okay. 
Shannon? Yeah, so, no, I think it's really important to understand that high proof is not about alcohol content per se, depending on the product you're working with. And I'm talking mostly from a rum perspective. So in a, a high proof, and I'm talking about high proof pot still rum, what you get is more of a preservation of character. And so that's the congeners and the esters. The congeners are kind of like the, the oily fat that give you the mouthfeel and the creamy texture. The esters are the floral notes in the room. So those are more intact at a higher proof coming out of a pot still. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people might be more familiar with high proof rums that come out of a column. Okay, so in column distillation, you have fewer of those elements intact, regardless of the proof that they come off the still or are diluted to. So it's important to keep that in mind. Who's the producer? And which apparatus are they leaning towards? Okay, so um, when I think of like an agricole rum, they are a column, but again, it gets a little tricky because they're doing a fresh pressed cane and a shorter fermentation, which means that there's more preservation of that raw material. So forgive me if I'm getting a little nerdy. But the idea we that, like it. Yeah. <laughs> I think people like it. <laughs> okay, good. Yes. Awesome. But in the case of a, a high proof spirit, the question is, um, what is the level of the preservation of the native material? Okay, mm. so if it's a agricole in the fresh press, there's a good chance that you get a lot of preservation of the native material. If it's molasses based and it's a pot still, your likelihood of that preservation is also relatively high. Mm. If it is coming from molasses and going to an industrial still, then you have a reduction there. And maybe you're moving into ethanol type of territory, which means that flavor, aroma, and body are stripped out. So all that being said, um, in the best case scenario, a higher proof or overproof spirit you mean kind of like salt. So maybe you're using it as like a, a quarter of your overall um, spirit component to just give you some extra oomph. Okay. You know, that, that je ne sais quoi. doesn't mm -hmm. have to be the whole base, but, you know, it just makes it cuter, so to speak. <laughs> That's a great answer. And I think it's so interesting to think about that. I think that really might answer the question for someone who might be looking at like, like I have a Trader Vic. It's not an old one. Um, but I got it at like a, I don't know, thrift store when I first started getting into cocktails. So I have a Trader Vic's and it's like, you know, the first time you page through it, it's just like, wow, so many ingredients, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I think that's a great way to sort of suss out for people why you would want so many different types of rum because they're not all the same, right? <laughs> it's like with whiskey. I mean, it's yeah. so similar, the categories. I love it. Well, I just got it you know, address a point regarding like so many ingredients, right? So when I cook, and I'm just going to give you what I think is a simple example, again, bear with me, right? So I'm really big into rice because I'm a low country girl. And I'm trying to entertain myself during this time. So I'm like, okay, I want to do like some Thai fried rice, okay? So let me tell you what goes to this Thai fried rice. They're all pretty simple in and of themselves. It doesn't take too much of each element. They all add up as it would in a tiki cocktail, right? So it's like, okay, I got some minced garlic, some minced yellow onions, some minced ginger, a little spoon of some shrimp paste, mm. some scallions. Mm -hmm. You know, so I kind of like marinate that in the oil, stir the rice in there, maybe throw a little chorizo or something. Okay. So it's like six or seven elements and then maybe some meat yeah. broth. But the elements in themselves are not that complicated. So I, I again, I'm a, a, I love cooking and I love having the editor having this book because that's really what it boils down to. It's like, okay, some salt, some pepper, some X, Y, Z. You know, just bridging that gap between the mentality of cooking and cocktail totally. making. Like, you open up a cookbook, you got like 20 ingredients and like mm -hmm. three yeah. basic steps. And people, totally. some people flinch at that, but I don't know. Maybe that's a great point. 
I think a lot of people are fascinated and intrigued by it. I think it's really cool. But you're, it's a, such a good point. Like gar- garlic is an aromatic, onions an aromatic, scallions an aromatic. You know, it's like we wouldn't hesitate to have all three of those things. Right. In a dish. That's such a great yeah. way to explain it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think for, for me too, and I am choosing to use higher proof spirits and cocktails, um, it's, it's for me about the juice or it's about, you know, I'm, I deal mostly with with whiskey for so many years. So if I know that I'm going to add a little bit of soda water or tonic or I'm adding juices, I always go for the the high proof whiskey. Um, I feel like I can, I, I like spirit forward cocktails. I like to taste. Sometimes I, I'll actually use a little more spirit than a recipe calls for if I really want to get those flavors to stand out. And I don't like to hide the whiskey. And I think that's something that um, sometimes people will, uh, they'll ask me about making a certain cocktail. Why didn't it taste the same way, et cetera, et cetera. Um, And I say, well, what proof was the whiskey that you used for that specific cocktail? And then, oh, you know, it was an 80 proof. And I said, well, try it next time with something a little bit higher proof, you know, try it with something that's a 100 or 101, or I'll say, try the uncle nearest 1856. And they come back and they're, oh my God, it was totally different. I'm like, yeah, because you could taste the spirit. And so, you know, that's an important factor as well. If you want to, um, I don't know, have all those flavors like play together and nobody is the star of the show. They're all just an ensemble. Yeah. <laughs> well, may I submit this? Yes. <laughs> Please. I'm really, <laughs> I'm really passionate about this, uh, you know, this topic of spirit and like why it's important. So, I had an opportunity to go to Rum GM a few years ago and to taste their Rum Apricot Punk at 40, 50, and 55. And it was very eye-opening because altogether, I was like, wait a minute, this 40% tastes like water. Where is the personality? It was not there. And then, you know, just kind of going back to the history book, looking at prohibition, the Volstead Act, taxation, right? Um, spirits prior to that in America were seldom released at 40% ABV. Mm-hmm. That's a business concession. And mm-hmm. I mean, I hate to break it to you guys, but when a government gets involved in drinking, it's usually not that good. <laughs> I don't think it's ever been good. <laughs> it might be nice to learn. <laughs> like a confirmation of my my hunch and my intuition. And from that point going forward, I was like, you know what? I'm going to do my best to not put anything on my back bar at Laddie's that clocks in under 45% ABV because there's no real reason for that apart from taxation. It wow. has nothing to do with product quality. Yeah. I'm not crazy Love about that. that. And I just, I, I, let's get into the product. Let's not get into numbers and costs. Yeah, I, I think I there's that. other ways to make it work for a consumer. And then I'm just like, you know what? No compromises. Let's give the people what they need and what they don't know they want. They will. I love that. I am, I mean, you know, if I could write a whiskey Bible, everything would be over 90 proof for me. That's great. Um, I uh, love it. And and even if you drink spirits neat, if you're drinking the whiskey neat, I would prefer to say have your, I always, you know, in my whiskey classes say have a little vial of distilled water with a little dropper mm-hmm. and you add the water if you Proof need. Down. If you exactly. need that. Do that, that yourself. Works. You choose to your taste profile where that yep. should land. I'm Every saying time. give the people choices. This is the yeah. land of the free. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay. I love it. I love it so much. I love it. Oh, that's great. I'm saying it's not a girl in me is coming out. It doesn't happen I, too often, but I just I love I'm it. fired up right now. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so um do you have plans for another book anytime soon? Do you have anything in the works or anything mulling around in your brain space? I do. My editor would like to hear from me sooner rather than later. Hey! <laughs> Spoilers. Spoilers. I got an email today. It's like, hey, you want to 
talk and I'm like, yes, I would love to. Not mm -hmm. But yeah, awesome. really, I do have something in process. I'm really excited by based on feedback from the book and the tour. And I want to, you know, drill down those things that people really loved about the book and also anticipate what's coming ahead. And that's not even why um, our current events have raised some questions around like what's going to be relevant and helpful. But um, the, the fire is still turned up on high here. But, you know, I'm in my remote location here. So That's good writing awesome. space, right? <laughs> yeah. Give me a second for this, uh, you know, second album. You know, it's going to be a little weird. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I can't wait for your second album. <laughs> I, I can't I'm wait. With nature, you know. Yeah. I love it. Okay. Um. <clears throat> so I'm going to post so once right before we are done, I'm going to post the link to your website um, and to find you on social media. So anybody that's watching that would like to purchase your book, I highly recommend it. Um, I, I, we have mostly whiskey fans. I would uh, suspect watching this. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that uh, one thing that I'm a little passionate about is, and I don't know how this happened because um, I'm not from the South, but uh, I have spent a lot of time in the Caribbean and the islands, and I am very passionate about the relationship between rum and whiskey, and especially mm -hmm. in American history. Um, they are very, very interconnected in American history as far as spirits go. Um, and I would, I would love for our whiskey drinkers to take a chance. Um, this is a really fantastic book if you want to delve into tiki and tropical cocktails and be able to use your whiskey that you love so much and be introduced to another brown spirit that's so beautiful and wonderful and kind of um, explore that relationship together. And what a better time than being in quarantine right, right. now. There's well, no better time. I, I love that you gave that shout out. I would like to throw a few tips out there. Yeah, please. please. So, one of the best selling cocktails on my pop up tour last year was the Tiger Shock, which involved a coconut cream, <gasps> coconut oil infused bourbon. And it's a <gasps> bourbon star with a tropical twist. There's some lemongrass syrup. It's really easy to make. That one's like killing and crushing it. And then there's the Laura Heat, which is a rye based version of Jungle Bird. So, there's a mm. couple. If there's a bourbon in there, it's not a stretch, you know, trying to keep it in familiar territory, but kind of switch it up a little bit. Anyway, just saying, um, just going back to our original point, you know, people think that tiki is rum. Mm -hmm. Tiki is flavor, right? So mm -hmm. flavor you know, and style, it, right? Yeah. yeah, it's flavor and style. I mean, Donna Beach Homer had like rum, very easily accessible. You know, American whiskey was mm -hmm. defunct at that juncture, unfortunately, after the Volstead Act. So he was using what he had, but you can use whatever you want right now. Mm -hmm. And that was the message behind the book. Totally. That's amazing. That. Total inspo. I love it. So, um, mm -hmm. you have a nightcap for us before we Ooh. end our broadcast? Yeah, it's a nightcap and an early riser. Ooh, I love that. Oh, okay, I'm very excited. Guess what's back? Breakfast drinks. <laughs> yes, I thank God. These days. <laughs> okay, so it's not. You guys are killing me right now. I'm killing myself. Okay. <laughs> what's what's breakfast? What's here? lunch? <laughs> so you were like, hey, and I'm like, what day is it? Like, Truly. Right. Truly. Like, yes. Yes. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna go back to like the kind of uh, Kentucky Derby theme and the smash and the julep, which is the I would like to say one of the first fancy drinks in American drink culture, um, be it rum or gin or mm -hmm. rye or whiskey, you know, whatever, depending on what region you're in, what your taste was. So I'm gonna kind of tiki-fy it a little bit. I put some. Um, mint in the shaker. I'm going to use um, some fresh lemon juice as well as orja as our sweet and sour. And then we're going to go with the 1856. It's, some, it's a little burlier. And then uh, we're going to enjoy it as we normally would. All right. So here we go. Okay. 
here we go. I'm so excited. I love Orja. The first time I taste oh. like what is this magic? <laughs> oh, it is. I, seriously, it is magic. I, um, well, spoiler alert, I'm going to use uh, Tiki Adams Latitude 29 syrup, Ooh. which um, you will find at that bar in New Orleans. Oh, fabulous. And we all know New Orleans has really kind of set the tone for American drink culture. Mm -hmm. um, my favorite thing to get there is uh, Sazerac from Lafitte. Oh. Mm -hmm. Like that's my, you know, airport cab drive drink. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I love that. You have to have one in New Orleans. You have to oh, have God, one. Oh, yeah. God, yeah. You're not, not leaving. Wait, what? You're not not drinking. You know the thing you have to have before you leave, I guess. <laughs> like that's how I do it. Okay. So I put in a uh, half an ounce of the Oja. I'm going to do a quarter ounce of fresh, fresh lemon. Yum. Love it. And then uh, two ounces of bitters. Now we're going to do 1856. I can almost imagine the smell of this, the aroma. I know. I'm having like an ASMR moment, I think. <laughs> <laughs> And then hearing you talk about it, I totally don't totally understand that phenomenon. But I'm like, oh, what else can you mix me? <laughs> I, I like to think that's uh, what a good bartender does, right? Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, you know, opening chapter of my book says uh, theater of the senses. Okay, so oh, we're, we're trying to wake you up here. Let's all be together. Let's be present. Let's enjoy this moment. All right. Yeah. Cool. How fantastic. Yes, theater for the senses. That's how she opens her book. It's such a cool concept. Totally. It's so resonant, too. Like, it's just, you know, we think about restaurants now. We miss them. Mm -hmm. um, we want to advocate for them to survive and get yes. them It's like, yes. And food on a plate. <laughs> I mean, look, I don't want to rub salt into the wound, but I miss my bars. Oh, I mean, yes. Yes. I'm, I'm just going to give you guys a nostalgia story that I don't know if I shared prior. I mean, so I, I went to school in Rhode Island and, you know, the initial plan was like, I'm going to move to New York when I'm done and just do an after year. But I remember the summer before I moved, I was a voracious reader of New York Magazine and reading about Sam Mason, WD-40, oh, right. Taylor, yes. oh, my PDC, God. you know, went to um, Dutch Hills, met Giuseppe. Yeah. I was so fascinated and enamored with the whole um, culture. Yeah. And, and, you know, that was a big part of why I wanted to be in New York. And so with that being said, um, you know, I quote today um, as a reflection of what I learned and those experiences. And I just hope that we can keep that candle alive. Okay, so nostalgia moment over. Um, <laughs> I, I talked about what was in it. Um, well, I did, but very straightforward. Orja, fresh lemon juice. We got the 1856. I'm going to top this off with some Angostura bitters. We go a little heavy on it in the spirit of the Caribbean. Ooh, love it. Uh, you know, kind of a julep style. And then with that in mind, I'm not going to spare any expense here in the garnish. Yay. Mmm, yes. Oh, I can smell it. I know. I'm <laughs> with my eyes. Hey, look how beautiful. I love the, oh, I just... I love seeing the bitters float. Oh, it's so pretty. So good. The good things right now. And now I'm going to do this, but no flame. Yeah, <laughs> it's good. Oh, love it. Little so for all of our home bartenders who take too much to make it work. So uh, it's just gorgeous. So oh, I love it. So pretty. <gasps> Yay. And now I got to feel tested. Yeah, you got to. Yes. Yes. 
You gotta. We're going to imagine oh while you're God. sipping. <laughs> All right, don't be jelly. Okay, so, I'll, yeah. I'll call this and press you later. Thank you. Oh, Yum. So good. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> yes. I love it. <laughs> yes. Love it. I love it. I mean, look, guys, I don't talk about this too much, but before I got like heavy in the rum and tiki, like I was obsessed with early American drinks. Like, okay. Tom Bullock, Martini, Martinez, like that was my jam before I got behind a bar. So um, good. So it's great to revisit those roots. It's so good. Love it. And, and this is good too. <laughs> so we will, um, so we'll get all those, all these recipes that um, Shannon made tonight with Uncle Nearest and we will post them um, on our Facebook and Instagram as well. And um, I just posted the links where you can find Shannon, um, shannonmustafer.com. I think it's a location, don't you remember? Location. <laughs> well, vir <laughs> virtually, virtually. Okay. Um, <laughs> and then also, uh, when we post these recipes, if you um, like them, which you, I know you will, yeah. um, please consider... Uh, purchasing her book, which I'm telling you, you will absolutely love it. It is absolutely fantastic. And hopefully we can get together uh, before the year is out in person, Shannon, and um, do some uh, mixing together. And um, I just, I can't wait till we're all out of quarantine and, and we can visit each other and be out in bars again. And I'm just so appreciative that you agreed to come on with us today. And um, it was wonderful awesome. to have you make cocktails with Uncle Nearest. We appreciate it. I mean, Sailor, I'll do anything for you. And anything for everybody <laughs> out there, just looking for some inspiration and fun. And, you know, I'm doing the same thing. I'm looking for inspiration and fun right now. So thank you guys for inviting me. Thank everyone that's uh, watching. Love it. Yeah. Thank you so much. It was wonderful to have you and everyone who joined us tonight. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. um, you have, we'll, we'll give you a little bit of time to collect the ingredients and maybe these are your weekend cocktails, right? Yeah. Sounds good I'm to me. This one. Yes. Uh, yes. Me too. I'm going to make that right now. Yes. And yes. <laughs> <I'm out of laughs> <here. laughs> Thank you so much, everybody. And we will see you uh, tomorrow night, actually, for our viewers. We are uh, we will be playing the last two videos of our VP co Mystery Box Cocktail Challenge. And then we are going to announce the winner live tomorrow night. So stay tuned for that. Um, we will start that at 7 p.m. tomorrow. So really excited. We'll see you then. Um, and uh, everyone, please drink honorably and in good health. Bye. Cheers. Bye, everybody. Cheers, everybody. Bye. <laughs>